B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. I'm B2B Cambodia's Darshana. Thanks for watching. We're here at Typhex Horek Asia 2024 in Bangkok, a three day trade show tailored for hotels, restaurants, and catering, otherwise known as the Horeca sector, with a focus on sustainability, efficiency, and technological advancements. We had a chance to speak with Matthew Clark, Regional Director of Sales from Shiji Group, a multinational technology company that provides software solutions and services for enterprises in the hospitality industry, and Puneet Mahindru, founder and CEO of Rev Mantra, a hospitality consulting firm that specializes in tech integration, about the benefits and challenges that come with increasing use of technology in hospitality businesses and what broad trends we're currently seeing in the tech and hospitality space in Southeast Asia. We're seeing a number of trends really playing out, obviously globally. And I think uh, the, the first of those is the disruption in, in resources, right, in our industry. And by resources, I refer initially to people, right? So our industry uh, locally in this region and also played out globally, we saw those resources leave the industry in, in many cases in the last few years and have struggled to come back to the industry, right? Um, but also we've seen then also a lack of knowledge and skill set in the industry, right? So technology is addressing that skills shortage and skills gap, yeah. The second part of technology is the local adaptation and the localization of service, the localization of service delivery and, and personalization. Uh, I think it's important firstly to understand the overall customer life cycle of a particular business, right? Whether it's a restaurant, cafe or catering business, right? And then be able to, at each customer touch point, imagine how can you bring in efficiencies using technology. So for example, during COVID, we saw a lot of contactless technology being introduced, a lot of digital menus coming to par, online booking systems and so on. But everyone thought about it in a piecemeal manner. No one looked at it as an overall strategy considering that restaurants and bars operate at 10% net operating profit, which is ex extremely good. Uh, and most of them don't even make that. So it's important that not only the focus is on bringing cost efficiency, but more towards revenue efficiencies because there's only very little margin in a high fixed cost business to cut costs. So I think uh, revenue optimization in restaurant is, uh, resides over four pillars. Uh, the first one is to be able to menu engineer and to be able to construct profitable menus and then be able to promote those. The second area where we find huge incremental benefit is that uh, server training has been very, very operational in nature. No one has really looked at data analytics and followed the role of you know, what a tennis coach would do. And then the fourth pillar is really in terms of uh, you know, being able to cut down costs. So if you're able to predict what your seat table occupancy is going to be, what type of menu items you're going to serve, then you can power this information into your procurement system and manage your par levels much more efficiently, which is about 10-15% of the cost of a restaurant. What I would say is that technology is certainly not displacing uh, employment opportunities. It's, as you say, enhancing those, filling a gap and supporting those for staff to do a more personal um a more concierge style of service, if you like, rather than a transaction. Importantly though, for maybe somebody who's entering the industry for the first time in Cambodia or wherever, wherever they may be, right? The skills that they learn there are going to be immediately transferable. The, the trend towards sort of cloud, mobile, digital technology obviously puts significant demand on some infrastructure. Yeah. However, if the technology is, uh, I would say, at quality, for example, right, that technology actually can be surprisingly light. It can actually be very light on the demands of the infrastructure that might be immediately available in that location or in that in that uh, region. Um, but you're in, you're you're right. Then the ability for that solution, that technology, to be freely open to connect is vital. So our first recognition whenever we uh, build or deploy something new has been to understand that this is very nascent. It's very new for uh, most of the people. 
So instead of putting the burden of them self-educating, we have built an ecosystem of training programs, right? In collaboration with some partners and some on our own, right? And the idea is ongoing education. So it's not just a one time. As a company ourselves and like our partners that we work with, there is a huge realization that in order to make any technology work, you need to educate. And the second thing is to be able to show the benefit, right? So education is not limited to just imparting knowledge, but showing how that knowledge is actionable and how it generates a benefit for the business. The conversations we have with either our partners in the industry that we're working alongside, other tech providers, for example, but more importantly, either our customers or those who are interested to become our customers, it's all around this personalization of service back to the guest, right? So many different groups of travelers today, so many different types of customer today, they all have different preferences, they all have different likes and dislikes and they want to be engaged in a different way. Now for a restaurant operator to be able to predict that, for a hotel operator to be able to support that, a lot of systems actually need to come together. Yeah, there's going to be not one fix for this problem, if you like. So we are definitely on the right path where technology is becoming better integrated. The core sort of view of the guest is becoming clearer. We're just not quite there yet. You've been with B2B Cambodia. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we continue to bring you more news, updates and developments from the business community in the Kingdom of Cambodia.